I have come to the conclusion that obviously black Democrats and black Republicans are living in two different Americas. The, the main complaint that I get in the comment section uh, is something about, you know, conservatives are denying racism. Uh, you're just tip tap toe tiptoeing and dancing and cooning and all of that for the white man. Racism, this, they won't accept you. All, all kind of things. It's, but it's really, it's not really all kind of, it's the same play uh, record over and over again from black Democrats. And I'm thinking, what are they talking about? You know, then I say, well, because I keep hearing this and other black conservatives continue to hear this racism thing and, and that we're denying racism, we are denying that America is racist. Uh, then uh, we must be living in two different worlds because there is no reason for me to deny whether or not some, well, if I'm being discriminated against, if I'm facing racism, why would I deny that? I have no reason. What's in it for me to deny anything? But I, I've come to the conclusion that it's two different Americas because the, the, the America that they describe and the one that I live in is totally different. It's a totally different America. That is the reason why I, I love my country so much and I'm so proud to be an American because that's, that's, that's the problem right there as well. Black people, some black people, Democrats have convinced, I think, the race baiters have convinced uh, black people that they're not Americans. I mean, they're living, they're just living in America, but they're not American. Therefore, when President Trump says, I'm going to put America first, they think that they're excluded. Or if he said anything about America, or oh, well, they're not talking about us, they're talking about white people. This, this, even though they were born here. So I'm thinking, I, I don't understand what, you know, what kind of world are they living in? In fact, I'm part of, you know, some black conservative Facebook groups, and they allow liberals, black liberals, or liberals, period, uh, to join the group. I wouldn't allow it, but that's what they do. And the reason I wouldn't allow it, because all they do is get on there and spew the same talking points from CNN and MSNBC. So it's, it, and you never get through to them, no matter how many facts are, are posted. They ignore it because they just want to get on there and continue to spew, you know, the foolishness. But anyway, it's not my page, so, you know. But I remember uh, maybe a year ago, some black guy was on there claiming that the minute he walks out of his door in the morning, he faces racism. Once he gets outside of his door, the minute, boom, there's racism. He's fighting racism all day long until he gets back inside of his house. And I remember thinking, you know, and I remember commenting, like, well, where do you live? You know, who goes through all this racism? I'm fighting it all day long. I'm fighting racism. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know what kind of America you're living in. You know, but you know what? I respect anybody's experiences, because it's their experiences, but I, I expect uh, them to respect my experiences as well. You know, you, I'm not going to dismiss your experiences, but you can't dismiss mine either. In fact, I would love to do what you call like a ride-along, like they, the uh, police officer allow people to do a ride-along all day to see what they, they go through. I would like to ride along for a whole day with a black person that says they're facing racism all day long. I would like to go with them so I could see it. Because I, I want to see this racism. Because the America I live in has, been, have, has given me all kinds of opportunities. And I've taken those opportunities. The America that I live in, has, you know, we have the Civil Rights Act that was passed in 1964. And there's all kinds of amendments to that. If you read it, they're talking about everybody's equal. Race, sex, gender, sexual orientation, religion. There's nobody left out. And there's nobody that has rights no one that other people don't have in America, American citizens. But the way people talk, the Democrats talk, as though people still don't have women, that the women still don't have any rights, and black people still don't have any rights. And I'm thinking, well, what are you talking about? Oh, we've been left out. We've been held back from doing something. The America that I live in has afforded me an opportunity to get a, a, an advanced degree. It's on the wall behind my head. The America that I live in. It wasn't given to me, no. I worked hard for it, but America gave me the opportunity to go and educate myself. 
the America that I live in has afforded me to get a good education and I make good money. I have a good job in this America. The America that I live in has been good to me. So why would I hate it? I've had nothing but good things in America. Any problems that I've had, I caused them. No, but no outside forces caused them. I've made some stupid mistakes. I'm human. Who hasn't? But I must say, the majority of my life has been good. I've made the majority of the decisions I've made have been good. I've made some stupid ones, I've, and I've, you know, it has set me back. But the majority of the decisions and the choices that I've made here in this great free country called America has been good, and I have prospered from that. I, there's no outside forces preventing me from doing anything. The only person that has ever prevented me from doing anything has been me. Even right now, it's things I could, should be doing I haven't done. And the only person that's preventing me from doing it is me. It's just that simple. So I'm saying, okay, so if it's all in racism, how come I do not feel all this racism? Okay, I live in, a, in Orange County, California. I live in an area that is nothing but white people. I mean, I live in a high-income area. This resident uh, that I live in, this resident community that I live in, I can count, and I'm serious, the black people, including me, on one hand. I don't even interact with maybe these many. I don't even see black people from day in and day out. So if I'm living around all these white people, I should be experiencing all kinds of racism. I, should be, I mean, how could I not? experience all this racism with all these white people around me. They should be calling me all kind of names, but no. In fact, nobody even mentions, we don't even think about race. Just go on, I, I, I go out with them, I have parties with them, I go to events with them, and, and, and nothing. Nobody cares about race. I don't hear about race until I get on YouTube or hear a clip from CNN and MSNBC. That's, that's all you're gonna hear is race then. But other than that, in my real life, in my real life, I don't experience racism. I don't even hear about any race. Nobody cares about race. I shop at all the stores. I go anywhere I want to go. Nobody is uh, whispering and trying to deny me service. I don't get any of that. So I want to know where is all the racism. That, that's all I want to know. Where is it? Well, they talk about things like the police, okay? Police brutality, whatever. You know, as the, and somebody even made a comment in one, on, on, on one of my videos, uh, just wait till you get pulled over by the police. Okay, I'm in my 50s, okay? I've been driving for over 35 years. Do you, you think I've never been pulled over by the police? I've been pulled over so many times by the police. But this person, when they pull you out and they're going to look at your skin color and they're going to beat you and they're going to, oh, what are you talking about? Why would they do all that to me? I've been pulled over so many times. I'm going to tell you, one time... I was uh, in Biloxi, Mississippi at Keesler Air Force Base attending a, a, a senior uh, non-commissioned officer course. I was trying to get to my next rank. So you have to go to a military academy to do that. While I was there, a hurricane came through. It was right before Katrina. It was one right before, and they thought it was going to be a bad one. So the day of, of our graduation, instead of us having our graduation ceremony, they put us in what they call, you know, one of the, a shelter because we were waiting for the storm to pass over. Well, it didn't hit us and it passed over us. So once it passed over us, they just handed us our certificate and, to, and so and we left. I jumped in my vehicle and I took off. I was headed back to California. And I didn't realize how fast I was going. And by the t when I got to Texas, I was on the, on the 10. And it was uh, some highway patrolmen on the intercom behind me and said, Driver, pull over, pull over. That's the first time that had ever happened. I mean, somebody got on the loudspeaker. And I said, oh, shucks, I'm being chased. So I pulled over, and uh, two of them was in the car together. And they got out, and they <laughs> came around on each side. And uh, they asked me for my, uh, you know, driver's license and all that. And I gave it to them. They told me to get out of the car, and I went to behind the car with, with the two of them. They said, do you know how fast you were going? They said, when you came off that ramp, you was doing 95. I said, where were you going? And I said, uh, I said, first of all, is this going to be on cops? They said, not unless you start acting a fool. And the three of us just fell out laughing. 
And I told him, I said, okay, I'm trying to get back to California. I'm in the military, and I just forgot. I didn't know I was going that fast or whatever. They said, well, you in the military? But they said, we, because I was going so fast, though, they had to give me, I think, a $120 ticket. But that was it. They didn't search my car. They didn't pull me out. They didn't, that's, I mean, that's just one incident where I've been caught over the intercom, usually. And I guess I wasn't looking in my mirror because I was going so fast. Because, you know, when you see blue lights, you pull over. I didn't see the lights. I was going so fast, I guess. Because I was trying to get back to California before another hurricane hit. And it wasn't long after that before Katrina hit. But that is the, but that's just one time. I've been pulled over several times by police officers. And nobody's ever done anything to me. Now, but people say, well, you the black experience. They do all kinds of things to us. Well, police officers are my brothers in arms. I love the police officers. Whenever I see one, I, I do this to them. You know, I don't have, why would I fear the police? I mean, I, and every time that I've pulled or been pulled over, I've been guilty. I was guilty every time. And I just, you know, I give them their respect. I'm on my way. A lot of times I've gotten away. They, you know, they didn't give me a ticket. That's okay. You're in the military. We'll let you slide. It didn't, but it doesn't happen all the time. I still get tickets. Yeah, I still got tickets. In fact, that I got that one, and I think because I was going so fast. So I don't know. So is it the police? I, I haven't experienced the brutality and the mistreatment from police officers. And I'm black. You see, I'm black. So I don't understand. This is my. This is the America that I live every day. I was, in fact, I was born and raised in Tennessee, in the South. I was born and I was raised there. All of my family is still there. Even as a growing up, I didn't experience the racism, even in the South, that they claim that they're experiencing now. Okay, my, all my relatives still live in the South, and they talk about racism all day long, too. I didn't experience it then, and like I said, I haven't lived there in over 35 years. But I, just, I didn't experience it then either. I've lived in the Midwest. I've lived in the East, the South. Uh, where am I talking about? I'm, uh, west, out here. So I lived in several sections, areas in the United States, and I haven't experienced all the racism everybody's talking about. So this is my life. This is my experience. Okay. So then you say, okay, well, but you know, I'm talking. I bought a home here. I bought a home. This this what really let me know that people, especially out here in California, do not care about anything but the green. The only color they are concerned about is green. Okay. I remember when I bought my first house. I would go to these model home areas, and it, used to, it would be a billboard up when, before you're driving in the community, you could see the home prices. And I knew how much I could afford, so I would look at the home prices and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to go look at those model homes. Well, one time I went to an area, and they didn't have that sign up, but the homes, the square footage was, you know, was similar to the other one, so I assumed that they would be the same prices, and, uh, but it was a different area. So I get in there. And when you go in, you have to go in, and you have you know, all these real estate agents. Hey, how you doing? What's your name? They want to get your name and all that. And they give you the paperwork, and then you go. The paperwork tells you the, the, the model number, how much your house is worth, and all that. So it wasn't a sign out front, so I assumed it. So I get in there, and they give me the paperwork. And so I started walking out the door into the model homes, and I see the homes are a million dollars. And I'm like, oh, I can't afford these. So I, so I decided, I just go look at each one of the model homes, just looking because I can't afford them, and then I'll come back. To, well, I can't because you have to come back through that same office with all the real estate agents uh, in order to leave. When I came back through, they was like, okay, Patricia, what can we do? How can we help you get in this house? And I told them, I said, I can't afford these homes. They didn't want to hear that. That they didn't have, they had, didn't know how much money I made. They didn't, they didn't know my credit situation. They didn't know anything about me. But they were still trying to talk me into, we can work with it. We can, work, and, you know. In other words, they didn't. I'm black, and everybody in there was white. There was not one black real estate agent in there. But not one time did they try to make me feel like I didn't deserve it, or uh, they didn't talk about. It. They thought I could. I had to tell them. I, was, I can't afford this. Oh no, no, no. One, one time I had gone to this model home and the only one was left that was available was the model home and it was already furnished and it was just beautiful and uh, the guy, the, the real estate agent was in there, you know, he had told me how much it was and I was like, you know, I knew I couldn't afford it but I was just, it was just so beautiful. So I had gone and told a friend of mine, I said, girl, you should see this model home and the furniture, let's go see it because she loved that stuff. She, and her, she would buy stuff and had to hide it from her husband because she loved decoration, decorating and all that. So we went back the next day and the guy said, Patricia, you came back. That man, a white man, he remembered my name. He said, I knew you'd come back and we could work a deal out with this house. I said, no, I only brought my friend back so she could see it. But what I'm saying is I have not been 
treated un uh, differently than anybody else, uh, been denied uh, the opportunity to buy anything. If, if I can afford something, I've bought it. So I don't, I don't know all this racism. The America I live in has afforded me the opportunity to get a good education, get a good job, buy whatever I want to buy, go wherever I want to go. I don't feel hindered by anything. So that is why I have the, the, I feel the way I feel about America. That's not cooning. That's not uh, uh, taking up for the white man. This is my reality. So, so, so what else can we talk about? Buying a car. I bought several brand new cars in my life. There's several. I go on a car lot uh, at, at a dealership. They run toward me. They don't ignore me and say, she can't afford this car. You know, I have relatives in the South that said they go to car lots and the, they tell them what they can and can't afford just by looking at them. They, they said they'll go try to look at a car and they say, you can't afford that. That's what my relatives say. They say, you can't afford that. You need to go over to this section. I've never had that problem, okay? That's their experience. They say that's what happens. I've never had that. I've bought cars in several different states. I've never had a problem. One time, I had seen a little cute car that I really liked. And I already had a car, a fairly new car at that. But I saw this other car at, at a, at, on base. And I was like, oh. so one Sunday after church, I was passing by this dealership that sold that model car. And I said, I'm just going to go in here and look. And of course, they were, they were on me. And then the little guy, the salesperson, he took me on, let's test drive this car. So of course, you know, I test drove it. And they said, you're going to get it? You're going to get this car? And I was like, you know, I'll come back tomorrow, which was Monday after work. And, I, you know, and all that. So he got my information, my name and all that. I said, I'll come back after work. I'm tired. I'm just going to go home. When I got home, they called me. The, the finance guy called me. He said, listen, ma'am, uh, uh, you look, the guy that's trying to get the salesman, he needs a bonus. And the only way he's going to get that bonus, if you get this car today, he can't wait till tomorrow. Now, that probably was a lie. He's probably trying to pull on my emotions to get me to get the car. But that's what he said. He said, and I said, you know, I said, I'm not coming back. He says, we're going to bring you the car. Do you know they delivered that car to my house? And, it, and I signed the paperwork and they went on. That's how badly, they, they, a brand new car. They, everybody was white. I'm a black woman. So, I mean, so that's my America. So uh, what else do you want? That's what I'm saying. What else is it that you want? If you are poor, what's the real reason? If you don't have a job, what is the real reason? That's what I'm saying. We, why are, all this racism, 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 I'm tired of it. And you say, okay, well, you have your experiences. You've experienced racism. Okay, I, I respect your experience. Because this, this is your life and your experience. But I expect you to respect mine too. You can't come and tell me that I'm lying and that it is all. And, and you know, yes, I have experienced some racism. But it wasn't from America. It was a couple of idiots. In other words, I can count on one hand incidents uh, where I've experienced racism from individuals. And every one of those individuals were losers, basically. They were no threat to me. They couldn't hold me back. They were just some individuals. I'm not going to say... America is racist. I'm lying if I say that. People are racist. Not America. America is not racist. I haven't experienced the, that kind of America. The America that I live in is a land of opportunity where everyone has equal rights according to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The America that I live in. That's my America. That's my reality. And I just wish that all of black America would take advantage of all the opportunities that we have in this great country. Take advantage of it. You only have one life. That's it. One life. And if I were you, I would not waste my God-given life and just sit back and complain and let all these opportunities get away from me. I wouldn't do it if I was you. You only have one life. Take advantage of this, the opportunities that are afforded to you in this great country called America. Have a blessed day.